However, this is not how Allah has made us. When a person works twice as hard as another person, then he wants to see twice as much in uh, return. This is how Allah created us. We have a desire to own and to possess, to control the things around us which make our lives comfortable, etc. So, we will never agree to work according to our ability and take according to our need. We will willingly work according to our ability, but we take according to what that ability produces. If I work twice as hard and it produces twice as much, then it is my right to take twice as much. And we're not going to be satisfied with anything less. And this is why when communism tried to impose this system in its domain, they failed eventually. They failed from the beginning and it finally just built up with every generation until, you know, the couple of generations that have passed until just recently now we see them all crumbling and all taking on straight out and out capitalist principles to run their economy. Because you can make people work by putting a gun to their head, but you will not get them to produce like a person who produces believing that he will get his right, his right or his due for the effort that he has made. So this is why the communist economies fail. Now, given this reality that human society is built on a series of commercial exchanges, then Islam saw to it that these exchanges were, re were regulated in such a way as to protect both the buyers and the sellers. So we find, according to the Islamic law, a series of commandments which the Prophet Muhammad has given concerning sales. And most of the commandments prohibit deception in one way or another. For example, Abu Huraira reported that the Prophet Muhammad had said, Do not leave sheep you are selling on milk for a long time prior to the sale. For whoever buys such an animal has the option of returning it after milking it, along with two handfuls of dates, or keeping it. A person is selling sheep, or goats, or whatever. If they leave the sheep unmilked, feeding it, well, unmilked, then the others will become full with milk. So when they put it on the market, it appears to be a very productive sheep. Now when you're going to buy, you're going to look to see the ones which appear to be the most productive. So now what you have done by keeping it unmilked for so many, you know, days before the sale, is to give a false impression to the buyer that they are buying something which is particularly productive when in fact it is not. So Prophet Muhammad said that if a person buys the sheep, they are allowed to milk the sheep, to test it, to see whether the milk will come back, you know, in, in as great quantities as they got it. And if it didn't, then they had the right to return the sheep. But um, the Prophet Muhammad also protected the seller in that when the person returns, they also had to return along with it uh, two handfuls of this for the value of the milk. Because otherwise you may have some customers who will go around buying the sheep, milks it at home, he brings it back, he goes, he buys another one the next day, he milks it at home. So he could just be providing milk for himself just going around the market. So he could in that way cheat the seller. So Islam, you know, because it is so comprehensive and it looks after the interests of all sides, it has protected the interests of the buyer and at the same time protected the interests of the one who was selling. According to Islamic law also, if you are selling a product which has in it a defect, you must 
inform the buyer that the defect exists. Now we know in capitalist society this goes contrary to the nature of business. The most successful businessman is the one who is able to sell the most defective things, you know, in the largest quantity. Right? Because he's buying it cheaper than the uh, regular price, you know, because when something is defective, they will sell those goods cheaper. So he buys these defective goods and he's able to sell it and make the same kind of money that the other person is selling the whole, the, the whole goods, the good goods, which he is buying at a higher price. So this one is able to maximize his profit by selling defective goods. But according to Islam, this is prohibited. This is sinful. You're selling your car. Somebody wants to buy it. You tell them what's wrong with it. I know this sort of, you know, goes against one's nature because you say, well, if I tell him, then he's not going to buy it. You see? I mean, it means I must fix the car up some before I sell it. I have to put some more money in. But this is what Islam wants because this is your brother. You would hate to have bought a car believing that it was good and then after you drove it, you know, a few days later the clutch falls out and the wheels fall off, the engine breaks down. You say, what is this? The same way you wouldn't like that, then you shouldn't do it to somebody else. So, you as a believer would inform the buyer of what is wrong with the car. It means this, it means that, so on, so on, and it's not working so well, so on, so on. You tell and if the person wants the car, knowing these things, then they will buy it. And such a sale, when you sell it, though you may not be able to sell it at the other price, you know, because when you've told them all this, of course, then you can't come with the price of a car which is in good working order. Right? You have to lower the price. So it seems to you, you have lost. Here, your money, you're getting less. But what has happened is that Allah blesses that sale, and the value of the sale increases, which returns to you on the Day of Judgment when you need it. What happens for us is that we tend to be short-sighted. We can only see what we get in our hands right now. You know, it means that 1,000 riyals less or 2,000 riyals less if we tell them. So it seems that we have lost 2,000 riyals. You know, but the Muslim really is far-sighted. He's not just, he's not, his, his, his whole thought, his, his consciousness is not just of this world. He is conscious of the fact that this world will end very shortly and there is another life to come where the best of it will depend on what he does in this life in terms of righteousness and the worst of it will also be determined likewise. The Prophet ﷺ was quoted by Hakim ibn Hizam as saying, The seller and buyer have the right to keep or return goods as long as they have not parted, or until they part. If both parties told the truth and described the defects and qualities of the goods, then they would be blessed in their transaction. But if they told lies or hid something, then the blessing of the transaction would be lost. To further emphasize the principle of honesty in business transactions, Allah revealed a verse in the Quran condemning false, the false use of oaths in business transactions. Abdullah ibn Awfa, or ibn Abi Awfa said, a man displayed some goods in the market and swore by Allah that he had been offered a price for it which was not offered in order to cheat one of the Muslims. It was on that occasion that the following verse was revealed. Indeed, those who sell the faith, they owe to Allah and their oath and their own solemn oath for a small price will have no portion in the hereafter. This is verse 77 of Ali Imran. It was common then, and it is common now, that people in the course of selling, you know, will swear by Allah. Telling you 
mean, I, I find this in almost all the stores that where there is some bartering taking place. You go to buy this good, you know, tomatoes or whatever, and the price they offer you, you know, 10 reals or 5 reals a kilo, you know, you know, 4 reals. And the person tells you, I am only by one law, by a law, I only bought this for 4.5 reals. I'm only making half a real on this kilo. And they're lying through their teeth. No, they really only bought it for two reals. But they're swearing by a law, they only bought it for four and a half reals. So, you know, they have to charge you this half real. You have to feel sorry for them. Give them the five real. You see, this uh, method or this expression in sale has been condemned by Allah. And Allah 